very good evening to all of you. So Thank welcome you. Dr. Hom Choudhury. And uh, as usual, before we start our session, we would be uh, introducing our faculty. So please give us a minute. So our faculty for today's class in oncology is a Dr. Anirban Hom Choudhury. His designation is he's a director professor in critical care and his credentials are MD, FICCM, PG, DMLE and FIAMLE. And the hospital that is currently working in is the Department of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care, GB Pant Hospital, New Delhi. So with that, I will stop sharing the slide from my end. Dr. Hom Choudhury, you may start sharing the slide from your end. Good evening, friends. So tonight we are going to discuss so 20 multiple choice questions, responses concerning oncology. And uh, what I want to stress is that whenever we, we look into these questions, our, our vision or our, our, we should explore them from all sides of the question. So I'm give, giving you a few examples. Yeah, so as, as I, what I was talking about that there are multiple dimensions whenever a question is framed. And as you must have realized, you have seen the MCQ pattern of other disciplines, other sections as well, that to answer a single question, you need to know uh, multiple aspects of, of a particular domain. For example, if you want to know the, uh, to answer a question on CA colon, maybe you need to know a bit of the biomarkers, a bit of the pathogenesis, as well as the timing of the chemo and the radiotherapy simultaneously. So multiple aspects are covered. Also, whenever it is in relation to CA colon or CA breast, so those interdependent cancers also come into the fray. So therefore, while we answer the questions, we will have to put ourselves in the examiner's chair and try to realize what other questions can also be framed in with the background of such information. So, so if everyone is ready, then we can, we can start discussing the questions. So let us see this. A one-year-old lady is assessed for oncology clinic following a diagnosis of grade three in invasive breast carcinoma without any vascular invasion and uh, zero to four axillary lymph nodes were involved and excision margins were complete. So it was complete uh, excision, wide margin excisions. She is elected for adjuvant chemotherapy and hormone treatments, which one of the following endocrine agents would be preferred for this lady. The options include Fulvestrant, letrozole, tamoxifen, anastrozole, and eximestine. Uh, participants, you need to unmute yourself and answer the question, please. Yeah. Or you can put it in the chat box. Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen. Okay. How many for tamoxifen? <clears throat> Toxorubicin inhibits the action of copo isomerase 2, which is required for DNA transcription. And this has mainly been associated with cardiac toxicities. Vincristin is a vin vinta alkaloid which disrupts microtubules and arrests mitosis in the metaphase. And this is also associated with neurotoxicity. So if you can note down of the various actions on the basis of the phase of cell division, then it becomes easy to understand that which one would likely to inhibit which particular step it's because then the purine synthesis automatically follows the tetrahydrofolate pathway and therefore it will not be difficult to answer. So this is one can be a, a template question from which questions might be asked and questions might be framed on this background information. Moving on to the next question, a 38 year old lady Uh, a 38-year-old lady has a left mastectomy and sentinel lymph node biopsy for carcinoma when diagnosed by FNSE 
the histological pattern is that of poorly differentiated carcinoma that is sorry poorly different uh, differentiated that is negative for estrogen and progesterone receptor so it is er and er negative as well as her so one of the sentinel lymph nodes demonstrates a metastasis her 36 year old sister is also found to have a similar lesion which of the following assertions regarding risk factors of this lesion is most appropriate so there again some amount of reasoning will be required one fibrocystic changes were present for many years a history of late benarchy is likely to be present in the females of this family she has a positive ANA, that is anti-nuclear antibody test. This finding suggests a BRCA uh, mutation or sorry, I have already shown the answer. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We can have a discussion that uh, on, on the same. She had an exposure to hydrocarbon compounds. Now, if, if you see, these are the options. So, as you can see that everyone has written D. So it is, it is correct that uh, this finding suggests a BRCA1 mutation, but it is also have to be remembered that why it is said so, because a small number of cancers, a small number of breast cancers, are the results of inherited BRCA BRCA mutation or BRCA2 for the family history of the young age. Whenever the age is an important factor, early menarch and late menopause and maliparity are the risk factors of breast cancer. So in the option you had late menarch, so late menarch is not the consideration here. Autoimmune diseases do not appreciably increase the risk of breast cancer. So any relation to uh, so can be made of autoimmune diseases just to uh, misguide you. So you will have to remember that. Let us moving on into the, is my uh, share is visible? Mandal, is, is it possible? Is it visible in the new slide? Uh, yes, the sixth question, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can see it. A 67 year old lady undergoes surgery for CSC car carcinoma cecum. Which of the following tumor markers is most appropriate for continued monitoring of this lady? The options are CA 125, serum alpha phenylalanine, CA 2729, CA that is car carcinoembryonic antigen, and CA 19. Yeah. I can see, wait for the chat box to wait for the responses. Someone has written CA19, someone has written CEA. So two responses for D. So rightly, the correct answer is carcinoembryonic antigen because it is the most appropriate tumor marker for monitoring the potential recurrence of colonic cancer, source of many questions, so one can think of. Moving on to the next question, choose the correct mechanism by which topoisomerase catalyzes DNA replication. One, it acts as a promoter to DNA synthesis. Three, helix torsion release, D, non-homologous end joining, and E homologous repair. So helix torsion release is suggested by as answered by both Dibendu Patra and Nui Darang. So it is there right that topoisomerase is a torsion in the DNA helix during replication. It accomplishes this by cutting the DNA helix at specific points to allow it to unravel and then ligate the ends together again. This allows large proteins such as DNA polymerase to replicate DNA along the sequence. Now, topoisomerase is therefore an important target for chemotherapy agents like topotecan, which can arrest cells in the S phase and 
induce apoptosis. Moving on to the penultimate question, which of the following genes encoding oncoproteins is associated with follicular lymphoma? The choices are BRCA2, P53, BRCA1, ATM, and BCL2. Let us see the Bendu Patra writes BCL2. No one else has attempted. So answer is BCL2. Both BCA, BRCA breast cancer related antigen 1 and 2 are associated with early breast cancer are involved in the repair of double strand DNA breaks by homologous recombination. ATM is inherited in a recessive fa fashion and is also involved in the repair of DNA double strand breaks. Now you have to remember that both double strand breaks as well as normal breaks, they are associated with uh, with with lot of uh, lot, lot with, with a lot of uh, uh, sudden changes. So like tumor lysis syndrome. So all those drugs which act on double strand breaks, etc., can cause sudden toxicities. So this can lead to acute admissions, following hemorrhage, following tumor lysis, and all such complications. P53 is also referred to as the guardian of the genome and is mutated in at least 50% of the breast cancer. So in fact, P53 was used to be the target before BRCA1 and 2 were identified of the most chemotherapies and during follow-up and the cyto chemistry, the P53 was the, was the only prognostic marker that was known. Now, moving on to the last question of the day, a 71-year-old gentleman is receiving track treatment for colon cancer with a combination of chemotherapy that includes irinotecan. Which of the following best describes the action of irinotecan? One, it is a DNA antimetabolite. Two, it is RNA and DNA antimetabolite. Two, it is a topoisomerase inhibitor. Four, it is an alkylating agent. And five, it causes inhibition of protein synthesis. So let me see, Dipendu Patra writes C, Nuidarang writes C, no. So it is a topoisomerase inhibitor. Idonotecan is a chemotherapy that is a topoisomerase inhibitor and is a semi-synthetic analog of the natural alkaloid campotrypsin. So its main use is in colon cancer, however, particularly in combination with other agents and it includes the regime folfiri Earlier it was Folvox, now it is Folfiri, which contains infusional 5 fluorouracil leucohorin, and I don't know nectar. So we have ended discussion of these 20 important questions today. And these questions can be the template of 200 more questions. So what I would suggest all of you is to go to the relevant sections or the relevant document, uh, the, the relevant information that is provided with these questions. And I'm sure that that can be the source of similar questions, which you will be able to answer more confidently. So thank you. If there are any questions I can take or Mandal, you can take on from here. Uh, participants, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Dr. Homechoke. Yeah, hi, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we had a question on celiac disease, and yeah. uh, I had put a question, but we moved to the next question, so we can answer that. I can. We can. We can move on. Yeah. Can she see the question? Is this what you are referring to? Uh, no, not really. I can just ask you the question. It's in general regarding hemat oncology. Okay. It's about the celiac disease where it was mentioned in the explanation of the answer that it can lead to, you know, bimodal distribution where MCB becomes normalized. Yeah. That's not clear, actually, because it may come in other combinations, I feel. So if you could explain that part a little. Yes. And it, to make it easy, I will just go through the questions because then others will not be able to relate it. Sure. Sure, doctor. Not a problem. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one, right? This is the one. Yeah. Yeah, you can see in the in the paragraph three, we yes. you have that statement. Yeah. So this is what you you mean to say that as a diffuse disease process affecting the small bowel, 
celiac disease may cause malabsorption of folate. So this was we are asking here. Yeah. Sometimes the MCV may be normal because dual due to deficiency of both causing a bimodal distribution. Well, so this is a this this is a, a simple concept. You know, when you go get, get a deficiency of pure folate and without any deficiency of iron, you can expect a megaloblastic anemia, right? That is our normal understanding. True, but but when you are having both folate and iron deficiency, normally we get a microcytic anemia, depending upon the preponderance, because the intrinsic factor which occurs in the later or the, or the extrinsic factor that occurs at a later stage, iron deficiency occurs much earlier, because a lot of folate needs to be actually deficient, needs to be occurred before that occurred, by which time the iron deficiency rapidly progresses. So the patient gets the, this picture of microcytic anemia becomes much evident much more early because folate deficiency takes time. Iron deficiency doesn't take such long time to manifest. However, when the patient is having a celiac disease with iron deficiency occurring since long and the typical, you know, the presentation of this iron, the red cell, the red cell volume is, the red blood cell volume is reduced. So in that patients, if there is a pre if there is a simultaneously deficiency of also of uh, this folate, folate deficiency may be because of the cancer cells or it may be because of correction of the iron deficiency anemia without adding folate. So in either cases, apparently there will be a period in which the red cell size or the red cell volume becomes normal. It neither remains no, no less because iron has been corrected and it neither remains high because it has not reached a stage where folate deficiency can actually reveal macrocytosis because that takes time. So in between that phase, there will be a picture when the red blood cell can be normal. But that doesn't mean the patient is having either an absence of iron deficiency or an absence of folate deficiency because both are present, but one is not manifesting because it is getting corrected and the other is not getting manifested because its threshold is high. Am I clear now? Um, uh, you mean to say the MCV uh, the mean corpuscular volume is contributed not the by all it alone mm -hmm. because MCV is what we are talking about here. Exactly. I was understanding that because of it the is, DHF it, inhibition, like in methotrexate uh, patients, right? We, we tend to get uh, macrocytosis very commonly. Very commonly. And, and so the, the, patients, the uh, time period which it takes for this monic is very less. Whereas the time period it takes following iron deficiency anemia is long. So because of this, there is a short latency for one versus a long latency for another. When a short latency versus long latency are converging, you are moving towards the cone, you get a zone when both are deficient and yet both are not manifesting. So this is what is meant by a normal value. I hope I'm more clear now. Yeah, I'll say a better doctor. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Any other question? So, Mondal, can we wind up? Good night to all of you. So, I hope you will have a, we had a good discussion on some of these questions.